to hi everyone well I got my own echo so it sounds right before starting I will uh, ask you a question I left school eight years ago for network engineering and do you think I spend more time on frame relay or IPv6 would a think frame relay oh you're right I spend more time on frame relay than IPv6 so uh, if you have, uh, before starting, if you have trainees at your job, uh, always think about sending a note to their teachers asking for uh, IPv6 lessons because it's really uh, something lacking today, the same in France, and I think it's the same nearly everywhere. So uh, I've been a member of the French IPv6 task force since, uh, I think, four years now uh, because I was working at EDF, which is our national electricity producer, and they had to start an IPv6 deployment on corporate network uh, because they uh, they went to the last uh, IPv4 private block. Yeah, it does happen. I will talk about what our national uh, telecommunication regulatory named RCEPT is, uh, is doing. I will present what the task force has been doing including a uh, handbook on some other projects and also briefly present you what our um, four main carriers are uh, technically deploying for IPv6 in France. It's, it's now been five years RCEP is mm, uh, releasing uh, each November, sadly this year it will be next January, the late. Uh, some KPIs they collect uh, through uh, ISPs about a uh, IPv6 deployment on phone, broadband access, uh, hotspot mode, and many, many other KPIs. Uh, they also do some statistics about uh, DNS zones to see if DNS servers are dual stack, if mail servers are reachable through IPv6, and all this kind of, uh, of questions. So 30 pages document, and uh, I'll, well, you'll see uh, the exact name, I think. Next slide. That's the example of what we have inside. So, on the right pine, on the right side, you have uh, our four main uh, um, ISPs. So, one of them is well known, free, uh, because they started to deploy IPv6 uh, um, 15 years ago now, uh, because they were lacking of IPv4 and they used. They've been using uh, 6RD and nowadays they are using 4RD because they're backbone is natively IPv6 um, and was a red one SFR is late and it's the only ISP that went through uh, NAT444 with 100.64 you know the RFC that no one should do and apply but it does exist uh, on the left side you have some stats about uh, mobile uh, uh, mobile access. An interesting point is the left one, the most left one, Buick Telecom, uh, they've been uh, 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 giving IP and settings uh, on phones that made them able to use IPv6 the day it was uh, rolled out onto the network. Meaning they didn't have to wait like two or three years for every smartphone to renew or get updates. Well, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, that's why they are well, the, first, uh, the first one. When you have a look at all our uh, top-level domain in France, so of course .fr and other ones, uh, we can see that uh, well most of the DNS zones are IPv6 enabled. Third of popular websites uh, are also IPv6 enabled, and the breakdown comes to mail servers, and mail servers indicate you that. Most corporate uh, networks are not even running IPv6 on the internet age. And I think it's uh, our next challenge. It's to uh, help companies to, uh, well, to deploy it at least on edge, because well, it's more difficult to find the business drivers for corporate uh, LAN, but at least they should do it on, a, on edge. Uh, I spend uh, my lockdown to write a corporate uh, deployment handbook. Uh, it's uh, available online, and we will have some some copies here on site. It got delivered this morning here, uh, thanks to UPS routing. I don't know what they're using, but they're fast. 
when I started to work at TDF, I was unable to find any resources uh, to help me to work on a, what we call verticals because deploying IPv6 on a corporate environment is not the same as doing it uh, at an ISP or in a small business. Uh, it takes years, it's very long. You have to reach many, many teams so for infrastructure, um, developers, uh, security, and so on. And if you reach them too early, for example, uh, you know, they will just uh, go on to something else and forget about what you said. Uh, <laughs> so you have the goal of the handbook is to help you to, um, to plan your uh, deployment and to give you many advices about security, about uh, network um, addressing planning, and of course uh, also about human weaknesses like training, like as I said, when to reach uh, people of different teams. Uh, so this book is open for uh, editing, so if one wants to uh, make comments or ask for a new uh, new sections inside, uh, don't hesitate to write to me. You got the link below and the QR code uh, on, the, on the right. And this, uh, and this was done, uh, this was released officially by the task force and it was checked by our national regulatory. So inside you will, as I said, you will uh, well, get to know when you when you need to reach people, uh, see what's, which cop you need to deploy IPv6 on. So as I said, internet edge facing resources or internal uh, uh, scope, um, and know how to ask for layers. Uh, because uh, before, uh, before being able to ask, for example, developers to uh, qualify apps in IPv6, you already have uh, at least 18 months of work <laughs> below. Uh, that's very, very, very long. And you have, as I said, uh, uh, advices and best practices. Uh, for example, the security part, I think we got to 23 pages with the advices and explanations. That's a, well, a corporate network, you know, from very, very far away. Um, from my point of view, I think many companies should really now start to work on the right part, which is the internet side, so VPN gateways, reverse proxies, firewalls, public facing DNS servers, um, all, uh, all this because the IPv6 become uh, so available that it's now a normal internet access. Uh, in, uh, in France, last winter, we went above 50%, so meaning that, for example, when you got remote workers that connect to your VPN, uh, all of them could use a native IPv6, and uh, others are still using a only V4, but usually for them to use only V4 through well, CGNAT or other stateless mechanisms. Well, oh, I mean, CG not set full and there are other uh, mechanisms that we are using uh, in France at your recipes. On the left side, it's more complicated to ask a company uh, um, to convince them to deploy internally, but we have some use cases. I know, for example, one company that is doing lots of car vents, so they buy many, many companies each year. And uh, working with IPv4 overlap and uh, NAT was a total mess. It was dealing uh, the, um, the project each time. So at the end, they went to IPv6 for their own network. And now when they buy a company, uh, they let them use IPv4. They convert everything to IPv6. And they do it again because they all always want to grow by buying other companies. And the other use case I gave well, at TDF, so as I said, was because they, they're running out of IPv4 uh, because each time, well, you need a, you got a fabric data center and early, okay, you got a slash 16, you got an VPC on Amazon Web Services, you got a slash 16, and oh, oh, we have few slash 16 remaining, let's try to do something else. And, well, I think here, like everywhere else, we have uh, companies that are 
sometimes using uh, three, four times the same uh, IPv4 private subnets. Uh, well, we see it, for example, in, uh, in large banks, corporations. Once you get a, an <coughs> IPv6 address, we, we've seen by, well, personally, and also by reading posts online, on Twitter, on Reddit, for example, people encounter some problems with IPv6 uh, because having an IPv6 address is not uh, just what you need. You need more, uh, you need more services on your CPE, like, uh, for example, prefix delegation, if you want to cascade another router. That's a common use case for uh, small businesses. You know, small businesses is not going to run BGP and ask for an autonomous system number. They already have enough laws to know about tax and so on. That's not their, that's not their job. Um, we have to be able to open dynamically ports, uh, so through PCP for usually. So again, this is not always a present on a ISP CPs. And the other common problem we saw is that some apps do support IPv6, but they are bad at API boards uh, because the developer is unable to test um, to test it uh, mm -hmm. with its uh, with its own access. And some and I've seen some developers that they release the app in IPv6, but they are themselves unable to have an IPv6 um, access to test it. So they rely on commands from other users, and that's a and that's a problem. Lastly, uh, we still see some uh, knowledge-based articles on uh, commercial products or games that are asking you to disable IPv6 if you got problems. I think we should really find a way to um, discourage this today. Uh, I, our spot of people are uh, uh, disabling uh, IPv6 like 10 years ago, m more than 10 years ago, because they are it was uh, not that good at that time because of the bad peering, but again, that was 10 years ago, and nowadays there is no reason to disable it. So each time you find a company that requests this, let's try to uh, to get in touch with them and see uh, why why they're asking this and how they could solve uh, this uh, this IPv6 related problem. To help developers, our so next task force project um, is to create a VP, uh, Docker image with a VPN. So uh, I think it will be a WireGuard one. And a management portal to let you uh, cut off IPv4, IPv6 to force triggering API boards. So it helps to, to check if all the uh, failover delays and so on are working properly. And then we uh, will have to find uh, hosting services that do provide uh, IPv6 with uh, DHCP prefix delegation. So that's not very common, but we start to see some of them. So here is a more technical view of what we would love to do. So let people connect to the server, dump traffic, uh, have a firewall that can drop v4 or v6 traffic, and then dump again and finally reach your final destination. And this book uh, was a candidate for a uh, HCIP working group, and I uh, got a mail this morning saying it got validated mm -hmm. as a, as a POC with HC. Uh, so I don't know if you, if you know HC and the, the IP group, but feel free to, to ask me later if you have questions about it. They mainly work on writing guidance or about deploying uh, network protocols. What, uh, what do we come across when we have a look at CP and the ISP backbone in France? We see different uh, technologies. Oh, we don't see DS Lite in France. I know it was common in Germany and it was a uh, uh, well implemented on uh, the command Fritzbox that is in use there, even with PCP to open uh, your NAT44 on the CG NAT, though it was done like this. In France, we have Orange that is running a uh, dual stack and they are currently sticking to it. They have no plan to change, so they are running everything in, in dual stack. Well, not the backbone, but last mile. Um, free uh, is uh, using 6RD, so thanks to Remy Depre, we 
developed a oh he's using four LD, so, sorry uh, because Remy Depre uh, uh, wrote this protocol a long time ago and they do share IPv4 between <coughs> four customers by default and Brick Telecom is using a uh, map T they're starting to deploy it uh, and they share IPv4 between eight customers. So we have a, um, in, Euro in Europe, we have a, um, a guidance from Europol asking not to go over 32 customers. And I know in Belgium, they have a law that says 16. So, uh, well, because as you know today, still not everyone is logging um, um, port with address on web servers. So when we have a police inquiry, uh, more people you have behind an IP, uh, more difficult it is to know uh, who it was. And we have fun stories in France when they started to share IP before of people that got arrested uh, for, well, I won't say what, but you guess what kind of stuff it can be, um, instead of a neighbor. So it, uh, we have articles about, um, about this. We would remind the ISPs to be sure that the offload uh, whatever transition mechanism they, they are using uh, because otherwise you can for example have a nice fiber with a, a gigabyte access in IPv4 and if you're uh, IPv6 uh, for example if you use 6RD because you're not ready to do native v6 and you're running it through CPU you might let people only use it at uh, 40 megabytes and they they will say, oh, IPv6 is crappy. No, it's just because it was not uh, intended to be done on, on CPU when you have a TTH. For XDSL, of course, usually the bandwidth is uh, not that fast. So you've got no problem in using CPU. What's, uh, what's next? What do we expect to do with IPv6? Uh, we have lots, uh, we see lots of new protocols, especially for IoT. I think nowadays we have like 25 uh, protocols that went from uh, uh, low DNG on RPL and there are a bunch of protocols for uh, moving IoT, fixed IoT, battery powered IoT, and not battery powered ones and so on. Um, and a quick note here, uh, in France we have uh, we're using IPv6 on our smart meters for electricity grid, and there are set nowadays uh, 35 million uh, smart meters using uh, six <coughs> low pan. Uh, so in fact, that's the biggest IPv6 network in France. And another use case, a uh, well, common one, it's not, it's for transport, so it's not for customers themselves, but it's nice for ASPs, it's to, well, to be able to start to work on a, segment routing with IPv6. Um, and I, well, we do think that in a few, well, maybe four or five years, we'll start to see large corporation work on SRV6, uh, the one who have their own MPLS, because it's, well, it's very practical on all points, and it enables you to remove some, uh, some layers. If you got uh, any question about the uh, well, the, the handbook or anything, you can use this link to to join the well, French task force, and uh, you got uh, your mail address on the on the left. And well, it's now for the question time, so I'm ready to. Well, that that brings a box because <laughs> I don't remember seeing a line when we sang this morning about uh, basketball uh, problems we could have with this. There's a question. You, you, you say you're using Docker containers. Mm -hmm. I've had real trouble with the Docker community getting to understand what IPv6 is. So I'm really impressed trying to do something about that. And most most of the stuff on containers is really difficult to do. Well, IPv6. Sorry, you need to speak into the mic. Yes. Oh, oh yes. That's <laughs> Needs a label. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder how, how, how complete that is. How, are, you, are you able to, use, to do things like Docker Swarm? Uh, a, in, at the end of the guide, I wrote something about Docker saying uh, that the IPv6 report came only one year ago. Mm -hmm. And that's why this year we've seen uh, well, 
Amazon, Google, and others starting to to roll out services in IPv6 because we all know they rely a lot on, on Docker and Kubernetes. Um, we see some people that let you oh, tell you, oh, well, you can use you can use NAT 6.6. Six. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot of that. Yes. <laughs> yes we, we see this, and um, I think people are not yet ready to have a maybe a BGP process to announce uh, a slash 64 directly for each container. We're doing this for pods, but and there is still lots of work to be I done. Mean, uh, there's a, there's a big need for guidance to help the software engineers understand that they don't need to use NAT because they yeah. just automatically do it. Yes. Uh, in the example I gave, uh, as a goal is to provide a slash 64 to the WireGuard server. We know it's going to be very hard to find the hosting companies that do support this. So, so yeah, today, sadly, it's still, a, uh, it's still very difficult to use IPv6 with, uh, with Docker, you're right. Uh, hello, congratulations. Google says that France is winning at IPv6. I don't think that's been stated today. That's well, really incredible. Well, uh, you know, it's just because ISPs run out of IPv4. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> because I, we, we had these national ISPs and newcomers, and they're not enough IPs, so they had to share. And uh, that's why free started early, for example. So, so I guess that was my, my question is, I, is it a result of the, the France IPv6 task force? Sad. <laughs> no. Sadly, no. <laughs> no, 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 uh, the task force, well, is there, well, there was a task force 20 years ago, another one. So this one helped to do testing, and they actually went to release it on uh, the research network, so Renater, Tim talked about it. Uh, but ISP started very late. Uh, free, at some point of their uh, life cycle, went to 99% use of public IPv4 addresses. And that's why the uh, world IPv6 out in five weeks in 2007, and uh, was a, I was customer at that time, and later they started to make it native to remove IPv4 from all the uh, devices, and today it's an ISP that uh, engineers at this ISP have not seen any IPv4 on underlay or on backbone since six years, I think, five years. So, well, except for some uh, TV services and because again, um, in KPIs, as SAP is doing, they don't ask for a voice and t on TV, but it's planned that they ask next year because we see that it's still difficult to do IPv6 with this kind of uh, of products. I mean, uh, well, well, I can talk for even common uh, a meeting, online meeting tools. Uh, you know, they usually, even if they do provide IPv6, when you want, for example, to have a link between a, a local uh, um, media gateway and the and the cloud, it's only IPv4. And well, I can talk about Teams for not uh, you know <laughs> saying the company name, but uh, well, that's uh, still a common uh, problem. And it's the same for ISP; they are unable to use TV and on phone system still today. But some of them are starting. I think Big Telecom in France. They told me. They are, uh, it's not in production, but they are qualifying everything in V6 currently. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Tom Hell from BT. Um, is it the view of the task force that SRV6 is the only future for transport of large oh, IPv6 well, I, networks? I, I wouldn't say only. Uh, but well, from what we see today in perspective, it seems it solves lots of problems. But <laughs> it brings uh, new ones, of course. That, that was a very good comment that you might not have picked up on the microphone. It does create quite a lot of problems yes. and then <laughs> attempts to solve them. Um, there are <laughs> other means by which we can do native IPv6 signaling within a core network. And uh, I, I feel it's important to make sure that we don't exclude those. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, th th there has been a little bit of a problem with trying to conflate the future of IPv6 with SRV6 and nothing else. And that's a little bit concerning from engineering perspectives uh, for, uh, 
for bigger ISPs in, in particular. As we say, providing IPv6 to customers is not related to the underlay technology you're Absolutely. using. I completely agree. Uh, yes. in Italy. But it was on the slides. Yes. <laughs> in, uh, in Italy, I know two ISPs that are using SRV6, and they do provide only V4 to customers. <laughs> And same in Eastern Africa, I think MTN uh, started to use a service 6 and they still provide um, mainly IPv4. There's some contention on that, s that Italian point, but uh, I will leave it there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Let, let's open this. <laughs> so it seems it's so it seems it's Christmas already. Wow. Wow. So we got some uh, some books or art copies. If you if you if you wish to stick to paper, you have the right to ask people to deploy IPv6 and stick to paper, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you see, we will, we will put the books on the tables outside, so okay. but you can just leave them there. Um, don't, don't walk away. <laughs> Please, you need to get on the stage. But uh, thank you very much for excellent session. Um, the interesting thing about Free, who were the first ones to actually start deploying IPv6 in France, right? And uh, thanks to them, for a long time, France was at 5%, while UK was like not even 0.1%, right? So France was the leader <laughs> many years ago. But thanks to Free, we have got the 6RD technology, you know, which was uh, created uh, to basically support sending IPv6 traffic over V4 network. And uh, so that's one of the transition technologies. I think people are... Uh, like who people who are deploying today, they are not really considering 6RD. They are looking at other transition technologies. But uh, this was uh, invented in France. You, you know, even the first one is not always the best example. For example, free uh, <laughs> during eight years, they didn't want to provide an IPv6 firewall. So you had IPv6. And well, it was opened. <laughs> so your printer, everything was reachable from outside. <laughs> After a long time, they put a tick box to enable firewall, and you cannot add rules. So it's <laughs> <laughs> gate, no gate, you choose. That, uh, you got no granular settings. Um, and well, people are asking on forums, uh, but they, they don't want to, to do it. And on the mobile phone part, they are late. I mean, they were the first on broadband, and on mobile, they were the last two. It well, depends off of yeah, the, depends the drivers. On, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. You see a very good talk. Okay.